Huangdou City in China, where we find Qi Nan, a 20-year-old cartoonist whose pen name is Baby Seven. Her passion is comics, and she works at the MC Comics bottom line. She's been working on her drawing since two days ago, and once she adds the last touches to her work, she falls off the chair to the ground. Apparently, satisfied with her work, she has gone asleep. But the chief editor doesn't share her satisfaction. She passes the notice to Baby Seven's executive editor that if she doesn't succeed in depicting the romance that the readers crave, then she'll be fired from her job. Kinayan doesn't know how to create that romantic spark between couples in love, because simply she doesn't know what love is. The executive editor explains how the heart beats race once you're in love with someone. Kinayan only knows what a heart attack is. Around 5 p.m., she's chewing her snacks when a golden retriever dog, Ki Bao, comes to her. It leads her to his owner, who's standing on the deck and enjoying the view. Ki Nian's heart races once they stumble and fall onto the ground and kiss. Ki Nian becomes immobilized when the man asks her if she's okay, and she comes back to reality. She gets a call from her boss and runs back hurriedly because within 30 minutes she must submit the new drawings. In the company, Ki Nian is positive that this time her story will be a hit. Meanwhile, the man who has inspired her is waiting for her at the lake. But as she gets late, he leaves her a notice writing his name, G. Yangson, and it flies with the breeze. The executive editor is impressed by the drawing she's seeing. What has happened to Ki Nian? It is G. Yangson who has happened to her, the romance they needed for the Kamasama love stories readers. But to build the character, they have to meet the inspiration behind the man in drawings. Ki Mayan hurries back to the lake to meet him. But where is he? She sits with her disappointment. Where can she find him? At the other end of the city, Ji Yangsen, an architect who's running the Yuan office, where everybody is greeting him, Mr. Ji, with respect and bowing. He meets his friend Xiao Zui, who's totally consumed in opening a mortise tenant cube. In a diner, Ki Nian eats noodles with her friends who are mocking her over her steel-made heart that she thinks is pulsing beats for a stranger. She believes that she's having a dream and needs someone to pour water on her head. And she gets what she's asked for. An idea sparks in her mind. Why doesn't she simply find her heart throb through the dog, Ki Bao? She puts the idea into words on the internet. Finding a lost golden retriever with a specific description and drawing. She hits the publish button. She gets a response indicating that he might be at Chumming University. For her comic plot, Ki Nian goes to the university and sits in the architecture hall. The professor comes in. It's himself, Ji Yangsen. Their eyes meet once again. The professor comes closer to her to see whether she is taking notes, but only the bell ringing saves her face. Let's go back a bit. When K. Nian published online about the lost dog, it was J. Yangsen who sent the response. What a scheming mind he has. K. Nian sees things differently. The professor wonders about her drawings, and once he asks about the memory card that has photo snaps of him, she denies owning the memory card. She says that she prefers muscles and six abs over charismatic faces. Here comes the swift change of topic. He asks her about his marvelous mortise tenon cube design. How could she open it? Kinian's dad is an ancient architecture restorer, so it's in her genes, but she doesn't brag about her knowledge as does the cold professor. As a reward, Kinian can request the professor whatever she wants, and what she wants is to develop the character that she has created for the story. What she tells him is that she needs to see him as much as possible. That desire grows deeper. He needs to appoint her as his TA and gives her the employee card. But why has Jai Yangsen changed multiple TAs within a month? He argues that he couldn't memorize their names, which includes his friend's name too. He scans his face to find his name. After all, we are doomed without technology. He says that he can't remember the names unless he associates something that is attributed to their individuality. And when Xiao reminds him of the event in which he will encounter his grandpa's peers, he gets a bit worried. Nevertheless, 
He has his TA, Kenian. He dictates her loads of work for the next week. And still, he has the habit of forgetting the names, however. He implements the rule of names, that if the next week he still remembers her name, then she can stay with him. Now her new task is to engrave her name in his professorial brains. She does her little research, and when he enters the theater with his usual grumpy demeanor, he finds Ki Nayam under his lectern desk, showing him her name and how easily he can memorize it. There they kiss for the second time. That's not reality. Let's take the counting back, because she wakes up from her dream to find out that she is looking for tips on how to tame a professor. But Ki Nayan is this type of girl who acts without much planning. She, seriously, thinks that she'll get that kiss from her dreams once she shows the professor her name from underneath his desk. But she gets the reality slap when he asks her whether she's searching her brain under there. Relentlessly, she keeps reminding him of her name. Probably, he's taking it in a humorous sense, because at the end of all her efforts, he's still calling her five-something. Six days left for the challenge. Kinayan knows that he's away for his firm business for six days, which means that he has put the lion's share of the class task on her tiny shoulders. Days pass by quickly, and when the last day comes, Jia Yangsen returns to the university, where everyone, from the janitor to the dean of the architecture department, is deeply grateful for her help and amazing talent. He opens his computer to find his project file complete. Under the heavy rain, she meets him and asks about her performance. The snob replies that she gets an F. She follows him and persistently asks why is he giving her such a low performance. She has given it all of hers. He replies that's the reason. Her motive was to make everyone remind him of her name. They go back to the university, where he insists on knowing why she is following him. At this time, Jo Yangsen's grandpa arrives intending to set up a blind date for him, but he looks at Kai Nian indicating that she's his girlfriend. As a good sketcher, she draws exactly what she's dealing with, and Jo Yangsen doesn't show her the romance and the involvement that the readers of the comics want to feel. The executive editor tells her that she should think of ways to act as the heroine of her story, the one who falls in love with Jay Yangsen. But why loving him is so hard, she thinks miserably. She goes to the Manga Girl fan club to get more love tips. She meets the painter, Ki the Guru, or Relationships Uncertified Counselor. He realizes that she's unable to find the romantic sparks in her characters and advises her that she quit her job since she's not fully into her stories. Key's words hit her so hard that she asks Jai Yangsen about the trade-off between talents and efforts. He says that if you're not talented, then you have to make an effort to learn. She goes to the store to find Key, the guru, fighting with her over their favorite noodles. They part their ways from there to only meet in front of her home. Key is her mysterious roommate. Clever Ki Nian shares her noodles for Ki's constructive criticism about her drawings. He notices the cold leading man. Since he's not an initiative man, all she has to do is learn how to flirt with him. But he doesn't bother. She follows Jai Yangsen as his tail to the library and gets that bulky reward of her favorite bowl of fried chicken. When she's outside the canteen, a group of Jai Yangsen's previous failure TA who seem envious of Ki Nian's survival so far. The funny thing is they share a badge of Professor Ji's fan club, at which they make souvenirs and drawings of him. What a catch! She may earn a fortune from selling his drawings. But things go heinous for our girl. The professor learns from his vicious cousin that she's not a student at the university. Upon this, Ki Nian decides to wave the surrendering flag and quits the TA job. The arrow is straight to his pride. She is the first one of Jai Yangsen's assistants who leaves him. But on her way out, she gets a call from CM Comics that she must submit three chapters of her work to the Fresh Work competition as soon as possible. Hence, she works all night long to get it done. In the morning, she falls on the ground from a fever. She overloads her cells and brain with drawing boards, but Ki decides to help her. At the university, Professor Ji's attempts to reach her fail. Nonetheless, 
His previous TA comes back in handy. But they need key Nan for urgent work, and she gets it done on time, but the result is a nice fall on the ground. The professor passes his presentation over to another lecturer. But it's not the reason he told her once she opened her eyes in the hospital, that due to a power-off, the symposium was postponed to the next day. She's out at the bus stop. Bus number 520 arrives. It's 5.20 p.m. and she confesses her love to him. The arrogant professor leaves the bus. Yet he's not off the hook for her chasing. She arrives at MC Comics to receive the happy news she has been selected for the fresh work competition for next month. They celebrate the success with more greasy fried chicken. Ki Nyan finds Ju Yangsen's business card in her pocket, which means more romantic details for her comic plot. She ends up in his home to deliver some documents, and she meets his friend, Xiao, for the first time, who's more lively and agreeable with her. But she goes too far and trespasses the restricted territories of Jai Yangsen. He lines down the boundaries, his work, his private room, and her overnight stay in movements in his house, all of which are off-limits. Her roommate, Ki, inspired her to check into that forbidden private room by telling her the Bluebeard fairy tale. She goes back home, and Ki tells her glimpses of his background and family. Until now, she doesn't know his real name. He says that he's chosen his mother's side. She can call him Pei Siki and they become partners in the character's development of the story. The next morning, she goes to Jai Yangsen's home to prepare his breakfast and looks after the lawn. Not only has she passed the secretarial duties, but she now has succeeded in his expectations for his home's managerial chores. Moreover, he hints at something about affection. His cousin tells her about the mysterious downstairs room and the phone call that he's been waiting for many years. Suddenly, they hear the ringing phone, and Ki Nian hurries to pick it up, but nobody answers. Ja Yangsen has arrived. He grabs her outside his forbidden territory. He locks himself in his study room, and when she records her apology, he doesn't reply, however. He touches his phone screen to turn on the lights for her. What a romantic way out of his den. She reaches home and finds Siki. They have takeout food. He tells her that he's been calling his brother all afternoon. It means that he's Ji Yangsen's brother who left years ago. Ki Nian learns from Ji Kui that Ji Yangsen isn't well. She goes to his house and tries to splash cold water on his face to let the fever cool down. NC's rival is Rongpin, a company that's run by Miss Lu, who has a fetish for pretty faces. Siki applies at the company to officially become a cartoonist, but she knows that she has to compromise a little because not all shiny things are gold. Her assistant, Jia, who's insecure about prettier faces than him, takes Siki's profile out and presents the rest to Miss Lu. This time, the selection is based on a meritorious approach and work. But Siki enters a pool of potential attendees. The ones who answer correctly 100 questions about Miss Lu will be selected to attend her autograph session tomorrow. And Siki wins two tickets for the session. Ki Nian accompanies her boss to an opening of a bookstore and wears a Peppa Pig head. The controlling freak thinks that a little amusement won't harm anybody. They sneak out and walk inches to find the Rongpin autograph venue. Then she searches for a quiet place to lie her dizzy boss's head down. While Siki is hearing all the nonsense and lies of Miss Lu, Ki Nian is telling Jai Yangsen more about her work as a comics painter. Things accelerate when Siki runs away from the venue after exposing Miss Lu's lies. He calls Ki Nian for help, but once he reaches where she told him to come, he finds the passage is blocked. Jo Yangsen spots him, and the chase begins. Meanwhile, Miss Lu takes the Peppa Pig head off Ki Nian. She recognizes her by the name, Kyu Kingwu. We go back in time when in the classroom, the two girls agreed to make a debut as professional cartoonists. Mr. Chow Lai, Rompin's editor, signs her, officially, into the company. As their business collaboration developed, they agreed on Q Kingwu as their shared nickname which has their names as well. They launched the Thither Cloud comic project, but once K-Nian came back from her exam time off, 
She found that her work partner had stolen her drawings and credited the thither cloud to herself. Back to the present, Siki gets the comic's assistant job at Rompin Culture. But to carry out the paperwork, he needs some documents from his home. Ji Kui rats out Siki to his brother Ji Yangsen, who finally finds him. After years of separation, the two brothers talk. The resentment from the past days. Controlling like the old days, they still have the same pattern. Ji Yangsen is back at home where he finds Ki Nian. Whereas Siki wears formal clothes for the interview, and the chief content designer at Rompin Culture comes in, Miss Lu. But as an anti fan of hers, the interview goes wrong, and Siki heads out with more anger. The brothers meet again. Their differences surface, and at the end of their conversation, Ji Yangsen shakes the cola can to get on his brother's nerves. Fortunately, Siki gets a call from his crush. Kinayan telling him that their combined effort has become successful. He reaches MC Comics to sign the contract as a co-worker on their project. For Kinian, all of her overnight stays at her boss's space resulted in a second kiss at night. And Siki wonders why she's fond of a freak. Is it a case of Stockholm Syndrome, where the victim becomes attached to the abuser? They go on his electric bike and have a fun night, but the older brother gets jealous and assigns her loads of work at late night hours. He tries to make things harder for her, but she gets to his home on time. He notices her wearing his brother's shirt and jealousy hits him even harder this time. And in the morning, he brings an electric cycle for her to take rounds until they reach the firm. More poisonous injections into plotting against his brother to bring him back home and his waiting chair in the family firm. He buys his apartment from the owner. Xiao meets with Miss Lu who convinces him to get rid of Baby Seven, but she doesn't expect that Baby Seven is her old rival, Qi Nian. Miss Disappointed leaves the office, and Xiao tells Qi Nian about the cold mask on Ji's face. He had a bad experience once in his life that has put him off ever since. In Jai Yangsen's home, he finds Qi Nian in his brother's clothes. Memories rush in front of his eyes. He couldn't bear how his brother would waste his life in a sort of utopian dimension with all those animations and souvenirs. Things get deeper between them. They go together on a business trip for Jo Yangsen, and in the car she reads some jokes from the internet. After all, the iron face hides tenderness underneath its cover. On the other hand, Siki is trapped with Miss Lu who's eager to have good talents in Rompin, but she gets stuck walking with her polished toenails in the middle of muck and mire with him, and they get away out via an ox cart ride. In a plot development, Ji and Ki Nian explore the architectural details in the houses and the stories that are attached to them. Then he buys tickets for the summer fireworks display, even if he doesn't like the fireworks, not because they wither out, but because that's reckless and unsafe. They go around the place, and Siki, who has a crush on Kinian, reaches the same place. The night is still virgin when fireworks festively colored the black skies, whereas they are in the Ferris wheel. The joy and all that fairy tale ends when Miss Lu tells her that she got herself tangled with the two brothers' story. The sad news comes when the grandpa gets admitted to the hospital in a critical condition. He has cancer. The brothers pretend that they have solved the dispute between them. And now, Siki is back at home. The grandpa's act goes up to smoke when he says that he doesn't have the malignant disease. At home, Siki tells Ki Nian glimpses from his childhood, once their father left them. Jo Yangsen became strict with him. One day, they fought, and Siki left for America. And since it's Siki's birthday today, Ki Nian wants to throw him a surprising party. It's wise of her to let the sleeping dogs lie. She doesn't know that she's gone a bit far, because Siki doesn't like his special day. It's all about bad memories on his birthday that rush once again in his mind. What seems like bickering in front of their sick grandpa has been deeply rooted since Siki's 16th birthday, when Jia Yangsen destroyed all of his stuff. All he had to do was apologize, but he did not at that time. Now, the wounded hearts need excessive work. 
The younger brother doesn't know how hard Ji Yangsen worked to hit their company back on track. Xiao tells him that, and that he needs to check why he prepared the party for him. Siki finds out that all his animation worlds are back and are arranged for his delightful heart. Things get softer on Siki's side, but get dense on Jai Yangsen's side. He tells Ki Nian that he needs her, then he hugs her. But it's Ki Nian who's daydreaming about him hugging her. He asks her to come with him and meet his parents. His parents are separated. As they arrive, they find Siki who shows his readiness to share the firm's responsibility with his brother, but Grandpa has fixed everything on his way. He brought a new manager, Lin Yi. Finally, the two brothers reconcile leaving their differences aside. Excluding Kai Nian, both have feelings for her, but Ki Nian loves one of them and tries hard to be his girlfriend. Ji Yangsen kisses her in the tent on the beach. However, things don't go smoothly. As for Miss Liu, she also tries her best to bring Siki into her company, but she doesn't succeed. As things go ugly between Ki Nian and her boss, she leaves the beach and Jai Yangsen gets inside his cave of total silence. He accelerates the speed, expressing his anger over Ki Nian's disappearance from the scene. At MC Comics, the executive editor tells Ki Nian that her project Dresses of the Beauty has been published, and the signing books must have been delivered to her by now. Only when they realize that the address, mistakenly, has been written wrong, their delivery gets straight to Ji's firm. Ki Nian rushes out to catch the books, and once she reaches the company, she finds Ji Yangsen with her love rival, Lin He. She intends to leave his house and tells him everything. At the beginning, she used him as an archetype of the hero in her project Dresses of the Beauty, and that Siki is her assistant. She needed twists and scenes for the story. Now she can't carry out the plan since he's getting engaged as she heard the rumors. Kinayan thinks that she has exposed her feelings to him. She has exhausted her efforts, but in the long run, all the roads lead to Rome. She leads with sorrows. He grabs her wrist and kisses her, meanwhile, his brother arrives and sees the intimacy in front of him, involving his crush. Ji Yangsen confesses his love at the same time her stomach growls announcing its approval. She's hungry. What better moment can it be other than this one? At a dining table outside the home, he asks her out to a date and give it a try. He gives her some time to figure out what exactly she wants. The next day, she tells her friends about yesterday. They tell her that she needs to follow her intuition and just be direct. Their relationship flourishes, and they become a couple. As it's a twisting love story, things take a different direction, especially when Ki Nian knows that Siki likes her. His drawings aren't as artistic as they were before. His thoughts are with her. He needs to take himself off their shared project. And this is what happens. Ki Nian goes to her apartment and tells Siki that from tomorrow on their partnership is over, and he breaks the contract. Miss Lu takes him in as from a long time ago. She has been wanting him in Rongpin, and in her bed as well. But in the morning, he gets kicked out of her home. He wants to date her. Perhaps it's his way to get over Ki Nian. And Miss Lu doesn't want to be a mere replacement. She wants to be in a real relationship with him. He voluntarily asks her to hire him as the chief author of the comics in her company. Jai Yangsen wants his relationship to grow to the next level, but Ki Nian doesn't seem into that once the wicked Lin Ni tells her that he doesn't love her. Now seeds of doubt have been planted in her head. She eavesdrops his calls and records them as graphs, saying that he's cheating on her with a pretty and rich girl. Rompin is throwing a welcome party for the newcomers. There. Siki stares at Lu from afar, but once he hears the newcomer's gossip about her, he gets infuriated. Apparently, he has strong feelings for her, and Kinian's mind is still wandering around the idea that her boyfriend is using her. She meets one of her schoolmates who shows her that she needs to follow her heart. Ji Yangsen leaves the choice up to her. She chooses him despite the doubts in her thoughts. Kinian's career sways in rumor mongers' mouths, they accuse her of plagiarism, but by now, she must have become accustomed to the online warriors 
and their wooden swords. But why does Miss Lu quit her position at Rongpin? She vents out to Siki the secret behind the shared identity of the cartoonist named Kiyu Kingwu. The rivalry she has in her heart against Ki Nayan goes back to years ago, when they had agreed to commence the Thither Cloud project together. She claims that she had introduced her to her editor, Xiao Lai who had identified their weakness and strengths points. Hence, he made them a team that complemented each other. On the other hand, Ki Nayan is telling the same secret to Jai Yangsen. The mistake was that only Miss Lu, back then, Lu Qingwu, had received the award of Silver Quill Cup. Back at the time, she felt hopeless and couldn't bear the pain. And she had to change her pen name. But Miss Lu carries on her part of the story that she got a termination letter of Thither Cloud partnered authorship and that K. Nian had signed the letter. Now, what secret could be behind their torn down partnership? Today is the autograph session for Baby Seven. She talks about the hero. When Jai Yangsen comes on stage and introduces himself as Baby Seven's boyfriend, the session becomes successful for Kenyan. Yet, the competition is in full swing between the two companies. In a hilarious encounter with her sons, Miss Pei does her preferred calculations and match makes the age ranges of couples. Siki goes with Kenyan, and Lu goes for Jai Yangsen. But they don't go for her archaic choices. The sons know that winning her approval is a must in the family. She suggests they record a dating video for at least 10 hours for what she calls the loving vlogs. In another twist, the two girls talk and know that it's Xiao Lai who had set them up and used them as stepping stones. At MC Comics, GQ gets the news from Xiao's attorney about transferring his shares to her, which means she'll become the chairman and the largest shareholder of the company. Things take the desired roundabout when Siki hands a recorder to Lu, in which everything has been cleared out about past rivalry. He Nian chooses to let it go and flip the painful past page. What intensifies the Ronkin issue is that Siki and Lu team up against Xiao Lai and leave the company for good. As for GQ, she finds Xiao working in a restaurant that's close to her house. She knows that he kept a promise to her father at the time of his death to look after her. She leaves him with a saddened heart. Why doesn't he see that she loves him? And Jai Yangsen takes Ki Nian to the Civil Affairs Bureau for marriage registration, even though the knave girl doesn't understand it fully. What are they doing in such a place? Then she shows the red marriage certificate. Still, she doesn't get it. Probably, she doesn't believe it. In the car, he explained to her how they have legal rights as couples. He is breaking down the news, one by one. And now Kenyan's mother is on the phone blessing their marriage. It seems that all the universe knows about Mr. G's marriage plan. But Mrs. G doesn't get the transformation. Things go well for Kenyan. As she gets supporters on social media, her husband, Jai Yangsen, has bought online trolls to voice out her case against Rongpin. The victory comes when Rongpin terminates Xiao's contract, plus all his talks with the third parties have been recorded by Jia, Lu's assistant. It's now wedding season, but it should come in order as the mother says. She will remarry her ex-husband. In the beginning, Jia Yangsen doesn't take it well, but he sits with his father and clears out the buried wounds of his childhood. Eventually, they laugh and have a good time. The day comes when Lu dresses in a bridal white dress, however. She has to wait for two years until Siki becomes the legal age of marriage. Then, she'll marry him. But today's bride, Ki Nian, is drawing the finishing lines of her story, Dresses of the Beauty, where the hero marries his sweetheart. Ki Nian wears the white dress, and Jia Yangsen gets down on one knee. The Chinese way of expressing wedding vows. They spend their happiest days together, and Ki Nian's love story has become fortunate lines for love stories to come. The Chinese series is romance and comedy. It's directed by Ching Shen Lin, written by Mio Zhu and Jia Lu Wan. It stars Xiao Bing Ji as Ji Yangsen, Yak In Zhang as Ki Nian, and Ming De Lai as Siki. Dear viewer, please share your comments with hashtag Cinema Recap. 
and don't forget to press the bell icon to get our videos.